Welcome, welcome. Hi, How are you guys everyone. doing? Uh, good to good to see you guys again. Uh, welcome to Extract Talks. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, hopefully, we'll have another informative week uh, to help you take the industry further. Right. Uh, we we have a, about. we do have an admission to make. <laughs> oh, you're not going to tell them. Yeah. Are you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, we we had that. Yeah. Why not? You yeah, know. Yeah, well, yeah, why yeah. not? You know. Right, so we we yeah. You know, last week we <laughs> we we we. we we did it. We <laughs> we actually did it. We did a ten minute podcast or twenty minute podcast in about an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. And I think we polished off the whole entire bottle of <laughs> of uh, Lagavulin. And uh, what was it? What else? What else did we? Whatever have? kind of rum you got sitting over. Yeah. There. Well, you were. Yeah. And then we had. Uh, then we had cigarettes. The happiness. Double oh, happiness cigarettes. Yes, Remember the that? Double happiness Chinese okay. cigarettes. It just wasn't appropriate. It didn't even hit PG. So <laughs> we. Yeah. Just so we. Things we, got out of hand. Yeah. And then we were having sad. a great time. Yeah. It was, yeah, <laughs> it was the greatest. It was the greatest the guest. <laughs> you would have really loved the podcast, but. Uh, we just didn't have that professional image that we all grown up to love. So, you know, it's just like, we didn't want to tarnish anything. We didn't want to tarnish anything. So that, that's, that's for the, that's for the archives. That's going to be sent to area 51 <laughs> and it's not going to happen, but, uh, thank you. Welcome. Welcome for being here and thank you for being here and everything. So uh, we are going to continue our series. Yeah. We've had a, we've had a really good series on uh, startup school. Yep. And, uh, you know, we've gone through a lot of the, a lot of the key aspects, you know, the business plan, uh, creating yeah. your presentation, everything. We're just kind of yeah. getting it ready bit by bit, showing yeah. you how to put, uh, a solid put it together. Plan. Yeah. Put it yeah, all together. Put it together. We talked about the strategic aspects of the business. Uh, you know, that's kind of like where I like to start, mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, making sure that you have, you know, a good vision in mind and then, right. and then you kind of go and you, you, you know, maybe you'll make your brand or maybe you'll make your, uh, you know, your different products and you'll, you'll make up a forecast for right. those. You'll be able to get some sort of, what do you want to call it? Like a business plan? Well, right? uh, yeah, direction. Yeah, I mean, direction yeah. and all wanna, that stuff. You don't want to just say, hey, I'm going to make extracts. Exactly. And that's that because it's we're exactly them selling themselves. And then, uh, you know, we, end up, uh, we ended up going through, you know, how to make a presentation. And then we ended up with a pitch. Yep. And I, we did... Uh, we did a pitch actually right live on the show, yeah, um, yeah. and and we just went through all the elements of what needs to be in your pitch. We made the distinction between your presentation and the pitch. Right. Um, you know, oftentimes people want to just hear hear the base the basics kind of wrap from it you. all together. Yeah, wrap right. it all together. Right. Uh, Definitely not the place to be taking shortcuts. You got to put a lot of right. a lot of time in. You know, I think that this. the the pitch is more intuitive. You're you're actually speaking to the person. You're speaking right directly to your audience rather than, you know, going, stepping them through step by step through the presentation, you know, yeah. and uh, oftentimes they, they're going to look at the presentation anyway. And like I was saying, they're, they're probably going to look at a couple slides, you know. Oh, yeah. Like uh, who they owns always. it? How are you going to spend the money? And how much money are you going to make? Okay. Right, so if right. you have, say, you suppose you put uh, all this time into making like 40, 50 slides and everything, wow, this is really great. And then um, they're only going to look at three slides yep. anyway. So, <laughs> exactly. Um, but, you know, yeah, they just, just flip it out. So today we're going to talk about the um, PPM, all right. which is uh, the private placement memorandum. And also we're going to talk about uh, cap tables. Okay. So we're going to do a couple things. But before yeah, we get important. started... We have stuff for you. Tons of stuff. Yeah. Resources. Po- oh, we got the podcasts, product tours, mini courses, guides, calculators, anything you're trying to do or figure out in the industry, we more than likely have a, p- a resource for it. So. Yeah. So our <clears throat> also our blog is pretty good, all which was not blogs. even mentioned on here, but yeah, because yeah, we have blog articles coming out all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we have the guides. I think we've been... I think we did a bunch of updates on some of the guides and uh, I have, I have a whole list of other guides I want to, I want to do. So I think the GMP guide is coming up. Yes. So, Very and important. so that's, that's, that's a big deal. Um, and then maybe we can even do, you know, some other guides. So those are written, you know, documents yeah. and things like that. So. But it's good to have that again, laid out in front of you. Uh, the mini courses are great too, but that's a little bit more of a, a right. deeper dive on some of these subjects. Right. Yeah. So you would, yeah. So the mini courses you would, I don't know, you would basically go through a set, series of, you know, videos. Yeah. Um, and James here edits the videos pretty nicely and puts them into like a course. And then we have yeah. quizzes associated with it. Right. Yeah. So you sign it up and then if you want to get certified, um, you know, saying, Hey, I have, I have, uh, 
you know, passed this course and yeah. I've passed it with flying colors, then you can buy a certificate for that. Yep. Right. But they're free for you guys. You're um, free to take. Yes. Free to take. No yep. problem yep. like that. So if you're just looking for the information, if you're looking for, you know, whatever it is. So anyway, let's, so let's get started here. Again, we talked about the strategic framework, uh, the business plan, the presentation, the pitch, and today is the private placement memorandum. So this is probably, this is the legal document um, that really um, would allow an investor to invest in your company. Okay. okay. And uh, different private placement memorandums are made under different SEC regulations in the U.S. Um, right. And they're similar SEC or Securities Exchange Commission um, in each of the countries that I'm talking to here. Um, there are certain rules with how you go about raising money, right? And there always is. Yep. And so um, you would have to talk to your particular lawyer about which regulation you could, um, you know, you could use. Now, there are rules with how you go about raising money. You know, can you talk about it ahead of time before you have a private placement memorandum? Can you market it freely? Can you put up a billboard? Can yeah. you go on the radio? Sure. Those are types of things. Now, a lot of the rules have been relaxed in the past um, you know, a lot of the different regulations, Reg D, uh, Reg A, for example, they, they would really limit what you could even say okay. uh, to, uh, in the way you could market to people. Um, you know, a lot of them are restricted to accredited investors. All right. Or they're restricted to, you know, people who, um, yeah, who are, are, there are some exceptions for like friends and family, okay, or yeah. people who are in the business. So, so there are some, you know, exceptions within the rules, but it's really important that you understand what those rules are. Sometimes there's filing regulations and requirements too for those things. So you would want to be in contact with a lawyer who could write you up a private placement memorandum. They give you all the, all the details. In oh, the right. U.S., uh, if you file under Regulation D, and there's different, there's different types of Regulation D filings that you can do, one of the things that's really cool about that is you can, you know, as long as you're talking to an accredited investor, you, you, can, you can pretty much uh, go to anybody you want and then do some filings afterward, um, okay. and you have to file within a certain amount of period after you do your raise, uh, which means you have to d declare that to the S SEC as All to right. what, you're d what you did. So we're going to kind of go over some of the um, key aspects of that. Um, I'm not going to go over the one-minute pitch, obviously, but here's the PPM. Um, and these are the key core elements of a PPM. Um, and uh, James had James had come up with a different moniker for this. Uh, this then, please, please, money. Please, please, money. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's absolutely the case. Yeah, please, please, money. So, I think that that's way better than private placement memorandum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Yeah, exactly. yes, <laughs> please, please, money. Oh, please, please. <laughs> okay. uh, it spells it out so they you know right. So this this spells it out. So it gives the investor exactly all the information that they need to do to make an informed decision, which is the key p aspect of this. This is why you need a lawyer to write it and not you. You can't write it, okay? <laughs> no. So um, it, it really has the overview, which is, okay, here's what the business is. Here's how many shares we're going to sell, and here's the price that we're going to sell them, and yeah. here's how much our, our the valuation is on our company. Yep. Here's our business plan. Here's the Here's what we're going after. Here's the market we're going after. Here's, uh, you know, here's what we think we're going to be able to do with that. Again, the elements of the business plan that you've written and that we've talked about in the previous uh, courses yep. here, you would be able to use those, uh, you know, here. That same you business could, yeah, plan. Yeah, you could give right. that business plan. In fact, it oftentimes could be actually attached as an addendum okay. or, uh, you know, to to the PPM if it's, all, if it's really oh, intense. Okay. Yeah. Um, a lot, oftentimes like the financials, all the graphs and the financials and all that stuff that would be attached to the, to the back of it. Okay. Um, and then the risk factors. Now this is all the reasons why you should not invest. Okay. <laughs> so, um, it you know, like counter productive yeah. because, but you have to be aware of those things that can, well, yeah, disclosure, right. If yeah. you don't disclose, you know, the, where you, okay, suppose, uh, I'm starting a business and, uh, I have my brother and my sister and my mother and my dad. Okay. And we're all together. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a, that's a related, those are related relations that, that right. occur, yeah. you know, that could, could create conflicts of interest and, and, or it could in some people's eyes create a, 
a more risky business situation. Definitely. So, so you know, you you would need to disclose stuff like that. Um, right. You would, some of the disclosures actually get to the point of absurdity. You know, like uh, <laughs> you know, if, if there was a one here. yeah, if there was a it. if there was a tornado, you know that that you know that that could happen. Oh yeah, oh, it could happen. Yeah. Tornado alley. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Or or for example, um, like if I'm if I'm growing a hemp crop and I'm down south, right, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, hit in the, in the hurricane alley, right? Ooh, that right, could be yeah. a that could be a risk factor, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you don't want an investor after he's lost all his money in the hemp crop because the hurricane took it and you didn't <laughs> do any insurance to come back at you and say, Hey, I want all my money back because that, that investment didn't pan out right. right so the, right. the risk factor you know, when they sign uh, the subscription agreement, they're signing that they acknowledge that, hey, they've, they've looked all the risk factors. Yeah. Now, the dirty little secret is no one ever reads the risk factors. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no one ever reads them at all. There's like, a, there's like the 30 line. pages of what ifs, you know, like yeah. uh, anything that could happen or possibly happen, just ridiculous things <laughs> or, or even legitimate things, you yeah. know. A lot, there's, there are business risks you know, why would you ever want to put that risk in there? Because you're basically saying, okay, well, here's, here's all the things that could possibly go wrong. Yeah. Well, um, because it protects you as, as the right. business owner or the founder of the company. Right. You're yeah. not selling people on a, you know, a, a scam. Right? Yeah. Or a COA. Yeah. A C- it is a C of A. Yeah, here it is. Oh, you got yeah, the, you yeah. got the, you got the receipts here, right? So... <laughs> <laughs> something along those lines. So anyway, so there's the risk factors and um, you know, they can be, those are writ- typically written by a lawyer. They're tailored to your specific situation. So it's not like you could go look up risk factors from another company that's in the similar business and right. copy them. Well, some of them may be, you know, like there's general market risk. There's, uh, you know, other things like that, but um, you know, there's things that are specific to you. You don't want to miss those. Right. Um, again, if you're going to put the money into uh, a PPM, the risk factor is really the way to go. Yeah. You know, that, that's what you need a lawyer to do that for you. So then the term sheet, that's, that's how you're going to interact and what the terms of the deal are. And All I'll right. kind of go through some of the elements in the, in the following slides here. But what, what the terms of the deal are, you know, how much the shares, how many are outstanding, Putting in um, X what the amount, governance is, you know. X amount in, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly, a year or whatever. And then there's the subscription agreement, and then the form of LLC or articles. So the subscription agreement is typically an agreement um, between the investor and the company, and it governs uh, what the rights are with their shares, and okay. it also governs other things associated with the company. So it's the relationship of the uh, investor to the company oh, right. and uh, it, it establishes what the ownership is. So that's called the subscription agreement. Oh, right. And then uh, form of LLC or articles. Uh, yeah, we, so we had, uh, that's basically the articles of an corporation along with your operating agreement that's filed with the state. All oh, right. And, the, and you, you would want to file in a state that uh, is business friendly, I would say, um, and has, you know, laws that conform to the UCC, a universal uh, or the, um, yeah, the co- commercial code, uniform commercial code, UCC. Okay. There are many states that do not conform to the UCC. Um, and I think that you, you want to have, uh, you know, kind of a basis uh, of judgments and, and laws in establishment of judgment and law, um, you know, behind you with the UCC because it's a uniform code. Um, sometimes people get in trouble because they don't have, they don't, they're in a state and they incorporate in the state that has, since they're living there or whatever. Right. Yeah, right. And they don't have sense. that UCC, right? So, you know, go to Delaware, you know, that's pretty much uh, oh, gold, the gold standard because yeah. they have, they also have the, um, the court there, the business court, okay. which is, uh, you know, the, it does cost a little bit more, but, uh, you know, saves the headache in the long run. It's, it could, like. it could, it could, yeah. if you, if you end up in litigation, which, you know, I think a hundred percent of companies that have been around for, you know, four or five years have had some sort of form of litigation. Okay. That they have to do with yeah. deal with. And usually it's in the state that whether they're suing or getting sued in one of the two, they'll, ha- they'll still have to have representation there but <clears throat> yeah i mean nor you could for example with all your contracts say hey look delaware law controls yep or whatever if you're not in that state there are some states that you know want to mess around with that 
and, and just because it's not uniform, you have an issue with uh, dealing with your vendors and all that stuff. So that, that's not the point of this, um, of this, what we're doing here, but yep. just be aware of it. Yeah. yeah. And also from the standpoint of tax, um, that's the other thing you need to think about and which we didn't really talk about, but you know, tax situations are really important if you are a business owner um, and the rates are, can be very, very high for LLCs and for even for corporate structures, the corporate tax rates are, are going up right now. And, um, so that's something you really need to think about. Um, you're, you're really going to be paying a lot of tax like yeah. millions. So, um, it's highly likely in the first four or five years of your business being open that, uh, the you know, your state and local and federal government will make way more money than you ever see. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so that, that is, that's just the reality of it. Um, it's not until you get up to a certain threshold that, that you're going to be, you know, especially if you're growing. Uh, yeah. Cause you need that money. Usually what happens is, okay, you made, you made this amount of money and uh, now you need to grow. So you're putting, you're putting all of that net income into regrowth, 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 and keep on investing it. Well, when you do that, and if you invest it, if you invest it faster and don't make provision for the huge tax bill that you're going to have, yeah, you know, so there actually is a huge disincentive there for a lot of small businesses, especially the larger your business are, you know, that the, they, there's a lot of, um, they're, they're able to manage their tax better. Yeah. They're actually paying a lot less tax and sometimes right. even no tax right. at all. Like some of these, you know, some of these very large corporations, like you have these small businesses that are doing, you know one to 10 million, they're paying millions in taxes. And then you have extremely large companies that are not paying any taxes right. or, or actually getting credits. Yeah. Right. Well, it just depends on how you work the system. And it is kind of that. Right, yeah. So get right a good plan. tax, uh, get a good tax uh, accountant. Yep. Um, Very important. And you know, the, be the better the firm, uh, the better you're going to better off you're going to be. Yeah, so, um, okay. So that's just some general business advice. Okay. So here's the table of contents from a PPM. Okay. You have the executive summary, uh, summary principal terms, uh, risk factors, like we had talked about business plan con conflicts of interest. Those are in case you own multiple businesses or you have, um, real, you know, like, uh, relationships that need to be disclosed, what right. the conflicts of interest are, you would disclose those here so that there wouldn't be, and there would be no qu question that, Hey, you know, we, we're, 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 we're not hiding anything, right? right? We're not right. hiding anything. It's just, it's there. It's a business. If you don't like it, well then don't invest in the company. Okay. Right. Use of proceeds. This typically is, um, you know, the, it's, it's, it's typically a table and the table has, okay, we're going to have 1 million for working capital. We're going to have 5 million for product development. We're going to have $10 million for our clinical trials, uh, clinical trial phase one. And then we're going to have, um, and then we're going to have $1 million for marketing. Okay. This is what we're going to spend the money on. Right. Basically. And you have these right. buckets and they can get really, um, typically in your business plan, you get really granular with that. Like, okay, here's my marketing budget. Here's all the things and here's how much it is. And here's my multi-year plan for that. Uh, <clears throat> I don't really see much benefit in putting that into the table of contents, but if someone wants it, they can say, Hey, here's, here's your business plan. Go, go look Easily at it. Easily reference it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say that, you know, most of the time people don't even ask for it. <laughs> they're not too concerned. No. Well, you know, they're, they're interested in the, the sizzle. They're interested in, right. in the top line. They're interested in the growth and, and, saying, okay, there's this amount of money is going to produce this amount. And I'm relying on that information. I maybe do a couple questions, kind of gotcha questions or something yeah, just right. to make sure that you got the right thing. But right. most like 99% of the people do not dig, dig deep, but you don't want to be sitting there with trying to spit that out on the fly. Uh, yeah. Look, if you don't know your numbers, you, you, you got to know your numbers. Right. And if you know, you don't go in there trying to sell the vision, don't know the numbers. Right. They might not ask you the numbers, yeah, <laughs> but, but if they do, be... you don't want to be embarrassed exactly. because if you don't know the numbers that immediately like will destroy your, your potential with that set of yeah, discredit right? you a little it bit. It will yeah. discredit you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, distribution policy. That's, that's okay. Suppose we have profits and uh, there's a retaining retained profits. Mm -hmm. What do you do with those retained profits? That's a policy. Okay. That's uh, are we going to distribute them? Like uh, you get a third, I get a third and you get a third or are, or does the company have the right to just 
keep it all and reinvest it, you know, that's what we normally would want, right? Yeah. Uh, so that we can just keep on, you know, let the company grow. Right. If we take those distributions out, we're, we're actually harming the, our investment, yeah. <laughs> you no, know, especially absolutely. if they're really growing. Yeah. So, um, and then, um, you know, there's also like rights on distributions. Like, for example, suppose you came in with $5 million, James, and, and, and Jared and I are partners. We didn't put in anything. And you said, hey, look, uh, I want to make sure that I get all my money back in distributions mm -hmm. before you guys see anything. So they do all <laughs> that type of, type of stuff. So James yeah. would get all the, dis all the distributions all the until, until, he's until he's paid back. And then after that, it would be what, third, third, third. Okay. Right after yeah. that. So that Seems would be a fair. typical, that would be a typical term. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's fair. I mean, I think that all of the cattle should, uh, should be eating the, the should not be muzzled uh, oh, while I they're treading you. the grain. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't, I think it's a, it's, it is something that is kind of like a carrot. Yeah. You know, like, okay, here, here you go. The distributions, you know, for, for the, uh, you know, investor, but um if i were an investor i would want everybody to be you know highly motivated like right, if there right. was a right. if i if suppose i you made a five million dollar investment and we said okay 200 grand came out this year and then uh, you get it all okay that's really great um you know if everybody can eat something that's that's kind of a cool i think that's more fair yeah. actually yeah but absolutely. but but you know whatever there's all kinds of different variations on that there's no end to the creativity <laughs> of the investor to reduce or eliminate his risk of getting paid yeah, back. Which makes sense. It happens. Uh, <clears throat> description of securities and capitalization. That's, that's basically what the capital capitalization is and what the security is. Are you, if you're an LLC, you, you are selling interests typically. Are you selling common interests or preferred interests or whatever? So those are different classes of ownership, right? Okay. Okay. You're preferred and I'm common. Yeah, all okay. Right. That's how that is. So <laughs> setting up classes and, and you may have rights that are different than my rights. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then you might have super, super rights. <laughs> My one, my one share trumps all your <laughs> millions of shares, that type of thing. There are many companies that are like that, that are even publicly held. Wow. I think that really limits a company when you get into a public setting because, you know, you know, nobody's, they're going to invest, but, um, you know, like an institutional investor or something like that, they're, they're, they're wise to all that. They're, <laughs> you know, until you change that structure, yeah. you may have a real issue trying to uh, grow your company. All right. Yeah. So um, that's that that is. And then summary of provisions, that's a limited liability agreement, certain tax considerations, which are, you know, you got to always think of. And then new subscription agreement form of LLC. So there's there. I'm not going to show you the whole thing because this is a this is a long 50, 60 page document. <laughs> you scroll through it. I thought I'd just show you the table of contents, yep. you know, just just kind of establishing, hey, here's what it is in okay. talking about what it is and then that will give you an idea about you know when you go to the lawyer you know you say oh i need a private placement memorandum you know what you're going to be getting right you know something like that what is very useful is a thing called the term sheet that's typically included in the uh, ppm mm -hmm. uh please please money sheet and that would be you know all the typical terms that would come with it what is the deal right yeah this is really what people want to know what's the deal I'm going to sell 1 million shares at two bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, I'm, I'm offering two bucks a piece. There's 1 million shares. So I'm going to raise $2 million. Then I'm going to spend that $2 million on, um, I'm going to spend it on marketing and product development. Mm -hmm. And if you give me that $2 million, then you get special shares that have special, uh, you know, distribution rights. They yeah. have special voting rights. They, you might even get a board seat, like for example, which is the governance of a company, right? Okay. Here's your company. Here's your board. Your board governs the company. They set okay. policy. They set financial policy. They set uh, they set governance. So governance is governance. Okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Gee. That's a Yogi Berra said that. <laughs> <laughs> That's really helpful. Thank you. But no, it's the thing that um, like the 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 independent board, which is a t typical thing that would um, you know be put into like like a public company. Okay. Yeah. That would be like okay, you know, you're not going to have like your friends. Your, your childhood friend's next door neighbor that you had that you've known forever and put him on my board. That's not an independent board member. Right. Okay. <laughs> yep. uh, or have my uh, second cousin <laughs> on, the, on my mom's side, uh, you know, the third. So that's also not an independent board. If you, if you put 
them on if you have a long-standing relationship there's all these rules right associated with who's independent and who's not independent um <clears throat> you know so uh you know and i don't really i think that the board itself would would make ensure that the board is independent okay right. that's happens in a public company in a private company it's totally different um, you can you can have his friends, family on the board, you know, type of thing like that. But All they're right. going to ensure that when you have like three or four board meetings, they're going to ensure, okay, are you audited? Yeah. Does the, does the audit make sense? That's the financial side of it. Um, you know, how is the, how's the business happening and working with, you know, maybe other companies? Yeah. So it's just like accountability. Are they operating? Oversight. Yeah, it's accountability and oversight is what it is, right? And that's why the investor wants a board seat, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So that they and there's actually articles like they have vote on the board, right? Mm -hmm. So right, they can actually change how the company is run by the board, um, yeah. and they can change policy. They can yeah. change, um, you know, even sales direction. They can change market focus. All that yeah. stuff can be done on the board. So it's very powerful. Be very very careful with that, right? So if you're a if you are, uh, you know, if you're a guy who owns a lot of the company, and uh, you you lose control of it, that's what's yeah. that's what it's called. It's oh, called right. that's because they're taking the board and they're changing the policy, and you no longer are running the show. You are so. If you're raising money, don't just go handing out board seats. Or yeah, anything. no, no, don't just handing out board seats you like bailout candy. <laughs> yeah, everybody's got a board seat. <laughs> we got 34 people on the board. Okay, no, I think you want to keep it really, really tight, and uh, you know, otherwise nothing will get done. You right. Know? Yeah. Um, so anyway, so l let's kind of go over this term sheet company shares of interest for sale. Uh, okay. Shares or interests for sales. That would be for sale, uh, singular. Um, okay. What, are, what are you selling? Okay. What's the price per interest or price per share? Um, that would be, that would be that what's the minimum commitment. Okay. So I'm going to go to 100 accredited investors and I need to maybe raise $5 million. Okay. Do I want 100 investors in my company? Well, no, I'd rather have like one person, you <laughs> right. know, or two people. So it, rather than having so many people, mm -hmm. there's an advantage uh, that also from the investor side, it, it's good because they, they get more attention, right? Yeah. If you're, if you're one of, you know, 100 or one of 1000, the investor, um, you know, and if they all have equal amount of shares, th those, those shareholders have very little power. Right. Right. So yeah. even if they may be a part of a class or a preferred share, they still have a lot less power than if it was just one person. Hey, here, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Okay. So the minimum commitment is basically what's the minimum amount that they can give you. So if I'm going to sell them a two, two box a share, you know, how many shares minimum do you have to buy? Right. You know, right. buy one. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> 10, no, there's a minimum, you know, so typically sets between a hundred thousand dollars worth of shares, $200,000 worth of shares. That's a typical for a, you know, typical small raise. Yeah. They can go up to a million or 500. It's really at the discretion of who, you know, the, who's the person raising the who's money. raising right. the money. Yeah. yeah. How many, how many shareholders do I want to be looking at investor qualifications? Are you qualified? In other words, usually you self qualify. So, um, you, you would, I, if you were a qualified investor, if you were an investor and you wanted to, uh, you know, um, invest, uh, I would send you a, a third party questionnaire and then you would, they would qualify you as, as a qualified investor. Gotcha. You have X amount of dollars in assets. I have, I, you know, apparently they don't want people to, you know, really invest that are not qualified. Now right. that's with a regulation D with a regulation A raise which is really awesome it's made for like crowdfunding okay so you know like <clears throat> you know you could you, you do have sec requirements for filing and all of that but they're really less uh onerous especially if you're going like public or even doing a private regulation a raise but you can um th there's a whole bunch of benefits to it and there's a yeah, there's uh, there's some really good books that are written on how to actually get that done, but that's really what allowed crowdfunding to happen. Okay, you know, and so some you saw these uh, things on the internet that are you Go know fund like, me kind Go of fund me yes. or whatever. Yeah, that's that's really what. Yeah, yeah, a lot of those uh, changing the regulations so that you can have um, you know small amounts or smaller investors that are not accredited. You know, actually invest in your company. Yeah, it's a it's kind of a good thing to do. Like if I have 
I might not have, you know, two million in net worth or and, uh, you know, uh, $700 million in my bank account. Okay. It, but th- I might have like, you know, maybe 5,000 or maybe 2,000 or maybe yeah. even a thousand. And I'd like to invest in this because I really think it's going to go up. Right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> if you're doing like a regulation D raise, you couldn't do it. You couldn't even participate. So with a regulation A raise, you could actually participate, which right. is kind of cool. So is that um, going to, so when you're raising money like that, is that going to depend like what, I understand the difference between A and B and being able to raise money in a certain way, but does that affect what happens once the money comes to you? Uh, it would, yeah. Well, it would. The the regulation A, you'd still have the different types of shares, so it'd, yeah. be, it'd be similar. Okay, it would be. It similar. doesn't change it. It just basically how you're getting. The yeah, money. how. It's yeah, just kind of how you know. are basically interacting with the SEC. That's okay. that's basically the difference, um, and um, it's also limiting. You know, like. There's the whole bunch of rules there. You, there's like limiting. There's a, there's also a cap on how much you can raise. Okay. Okay. So there's yep. tough things. There's a bunch of different rules there. Yeah. But it's pretty cool. And there's other different types of uh, regulations that you can uh, raise money under as well. Okay. It's not just those two. These okay. are just the main ones. That yeah. You there's like an S one. And yeah. And yeah. And I think that the um, you know the crowdfund raising has been quite popular. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, so yeah, and you, you know, with a crowdfund, you might not need to have a PPM. um, And it's a lot of people probably are going to yell at me for that. (laughs) Um, But uh, I think it's the PPM is there for your benefit as a owner. Okay. Because what you're doing is you're disclosing all of the risks so that you don't get sued by a disgruntled investor later on so down the could road. could be a CYA. Almost. Yeah, it is a CYA. CYA. Yeah, that's a CYA. <laughs> please, please money, but CYA all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. So, okay, um, pre-money valuation. Um, let me see here. And use of proceeds, we kind of talked about that. Pre-money valuation is, okay, w- w- are you going to go out with a pre-priced round? Um, in other words, um, are you going to set the value of your company? As mm-hmm. soon as you set the value of your company, my company is worth $10 million. Yeah. Okay, um, and I have two two owners, and there's uh, you know um, I have five million shares, uh, five million shares outstanding, or ten million shares outstanding. Let's just put it that way. Mm-hmm. So it's a dollar share right now, and I'm going to raise four million dollars. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna, the pre money valuation is is going to establish how what the value is of the overall company. Okay. Right. I mean, yeah. it's gonna you're gonna raising at ten million dollars. It's also gonna establish the price that you're gonna be selling the shares at. Yeah. And it's gonna you know all that, and also it it will establish um, yeah basically all that. So that's what the pre money valuation is, and you can set that, you can calculate that. This is where all the arguments come. All right. Okay. So well, I don't really believe in that pre money valuation. Like uh, you know, financial buyers they don't they always want a zero pre money valuation. Okay, it's not worth anything. Unless we, we buy it or unless we invest in it, then it's going to be worth everything. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's always going to be, you know, um, you know, the, the buyer is going to be um, tipping uh, the scales yeah. in one way. You've seen this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've seen this, like, you know, the buyer and the seller. The seller's on one side pushing the money up and the buyer's on the other side, you know, <laughs> pushing the money down. Okay. So, so it's kind of like, it's kind of like that. Um, right. And so you need to, one thing you can do is establish, um, your value with a objective, uh, you know, accounting standard. There's okay. a lot of different ways to do it. There's, um, there's book value, which is basically the value of the assets and cash that are on your, uh, sp- on your balance sheet. Mm-hmm. There's a, what they call a net present value. I know we've talked a lot about in, you know, about the value of your company mm-hmm. and, um, you know, the value of company really coming back to how much cash it can generate. Now right. you can, you can make a projection and then discount the, all the cash that you would make in, in the year one, year two, year three. You can discount that all to today's dollars and then you'd have a, at a discount rate. Mm. And that way you'd establish an objective way to value the company. Okay. Okay. And of course, then they're going to apply their own discount rate because the higher the discount rate, the less the value, right? Right. Um, there's also a, a figure in there, a merit in there called the beta. And if you have a very high risk, it's, it's kind of a multiplier on that, on that discount rate. The fundam- 
just suffice it to say there's lots of different ways to value the company. Mm -hmm. And um, there are some objective ones. And uh, especially if you have historical financials, which are really awesome. Suppose you have a track record. Okay, I, I'm working this business, bootstrapping it for two years and or th- even three years, we even be better. And I'm looking back at the last 12 months and then I'm looking at my track record and I'm saying, okay, we're continuously growing here. You can then have a good argument that, hey, my growth is going to continue. Yeah. Past, re- past is, is the indicative of the future and I'm going to continue to go up and here's my plan to do that. And that you could take all of the cash flow from the in the next three four years and then discount it to today's dollars and that's all actually will give you a better risk profile and yeah. a higher valuation because right. you have actual track record yeah, right that makes sense so yeah um, capitalization is uh, basically how you you know how how your company is funded right okay so the owners uh, put in you know a million dollars in their own cash the uh, investors put in two million, and then the banks put in a million. Okay, that would be all those together would be the the capitalization. Okay, voting rights. Um, you know what? Okay, I have voting rights. You have voting rights, and you have voting rights. Okay. Um, all those in favor of voting James off the island. <laughs> Okay. No, okay. No, sorry, James. No. <laughs> okay. You don't get anything. We're going to change you. Uh, no, no. <laughs> okay. We just voted him off the island. We get all his votes now of all his shares. No, actually the voting rights are established in, in a large part by state law. So there's some things that you, you know, they may try to take away in your, in your subscription agreement. They say, okay, you don't have any voting rights here, 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 and here, but state law would override those. Okay. So they might be try to they might try to sneak something past you. Well, it's not that. It's just you know, like I kind of was always kind of wondering about that. I mean, if I have an investor, or if you and I have an agreement together that says, "Okay, look, yeah, I don't have any rights for, um, like, uh, to get financials every week." Okay. Okay. But then state law says, "Hey, you have to give them financials every week." I got gotcha. you. That's right. just putting a burden on you know on on the company, right? Yeah. Things like that. Provide that information. Yeah. A lot of, yeah. So it's, uh, the state law is never that onerous really. Um, but you know, in some cases you may be forced to give financials to an adverse player. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, you know, who is in the midst of even a uh, lawsuit against you. So Uh, there's all kinds of things there that you would, you know, sometimes the state law, you know, there's reasons why you, you have, you know, you incorporate in certain States, right? Yeah. That's the other thing. So you've, unless you're an expert at all of the regulations related to the state law and they vary state by state. Yeah. You know, <laughs> not too many experts out there like that. Well, yeah, there are, there are too many experts. So the, your best bet is basically to go to somewhere where most of the businesses are operating. Right. Cause you would think that it'd be mostly business friendly. Yeah. Right. Makes so sense. there are states in the union that are extremely business unfriendly. I'm not going to name them, but they are very unfriendly to business. So, uh, you know, that's why people incorporate in, you know, other places. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me see here. So governance, we talked about that a um, little bit about, about the different things. You know, who's going to govern? Are you going to get, uh, are you going to get a vote on the board or whatever? Yeah. Um, information rights. Uh, that's, am I going to be able to receive you know statements every year or yeah. every quarter or every week or whatever yeah. do you have any information rights at all you know a lot of times they don't have information rights for for investors basically because okay suppose i have a thousand investors and having a thousand investors all demanding for you know co- you know like weekly, weekly financials <laughs> or whatever it wouldn't wouldn't make any sense so it has to be defined really well okay yeah. in there um and then indemnification that's kind of Hey, when the officers uh, of the company, if they do something wrong and, uh, and something that the investors don't agree with, can they sue them? You know, so right. what they, or if they do something and they lose the investment, for example, which happens, um, you know, are they going to do, are they going to get sued? Okay. So that's right. always, that's why you have the document, you know, right. uh, it, obviously <clears throat> the owners and the officers of the company would, would they don't want to always have to be looking over their shoulder to see someone's right. in it. But the reality is, is that there's always a lawyer there. There's always someone there who's going to be disgruntled. There's always someone there who's going to try to shoot your, shoot you yeah. uh, figuratively. 
Um, and so, you know, those are the types of things that you need to really be thinking about. So cover CYA for sure. You know, transfers, withdrawals, like if I died, for example, what would happen to my shares with you two as, you know, founders or, mm-hmm. or investor founder, what happens? So there's transfers and withdrawals. What if I find, I say, hey, look, I don't think this is any good for me anymore. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to sell my investment to someone else. Okay. It, it, but let's just say further that you guys had a raise going on and you were, you had a valuation of 50 million and I just want out. So I'll just sell it for 10 million. All right. Right. Yeah. So that would, those investors that you're marketing to over here might come to me and get my shares. So those, yeah. you know, and try to bypass your valuation. Oh, I Because I'd see be just happy saying. with, oh, I'd be happy with a million bucks, right? Okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you later. See you later. Screw you guys. You right. Know? Yeah. That happens, okay? So yeah. transfers and withdrawals are very, they need to be governed. And this Definitely. is where what I would do. Now, a lot of these items will also fall into your articles and into your LLC. So um, agreement, okay, that you yeah. have with your guys. Okay, risk factors obviously are in there. Uh, investor suitability, do, are you accredited or are you not accredited? And then there's the subscription procedure. So that's, in other words, what documents do you need to fill out and where do you wire the money? Right. That's the most important. Right. Where's the money coming? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So now we're going to go to even... <laughs> my yes yeah, so we'll take a credit card uh a visa mastercard yeah, yeah. <laughs> like whatever um american express we take american express too um i think they have those cards with no limit on them right yeah. yep. i'd like I to do. put i'd like to put my three million dollar investment on my credit card <laughs> <laughs> i wish it was that simple. <laughs> uh, okay so now we're going to go into an even more boring topic but it's a topic that a lot of investors need to know the basics on, um, and this is not to meant to be a, a super in-depth thing for you, but you're going to need to do and understand what the cap table is because you need to have that in your presentation, Yeah, you know, and you need to be able to kind of, you know, what the cap table is, is it's who's, what are the shares? What are the different types of shares? Who owns them? Yeah. And what value is there on those shares? All right. So that's the key document that you need to really understand you know, the workings of the business, right? So, you know, typical cap table would be, uh, you know, something you could, you want to, you would want to understand. So here's, here's an example here. I'll just kind of pull it up of a cap table that, uh, that I have used in the past for various things here. Um, and this one, I actually downloaded from this comp- uh, this uh, online site called Venture Hacks. Oh. They have a, like a narrative, a YouTube narrative on how to really fill this out. So it's, it's actually pretty good. So if you end up going to venture hacks and getting this, you can use our tutorial here along with his tutorial. Um, I, I admit his tutorial is going to be a little bit better. Um, but I'm going to try to break it all down into layman's terms so that we can understand, you know, all the deal. Yeah. It's narrated by a financial guy. So, you know, and usually your financial guy would be doing this, but sometimes entrepreneurs have multiple hats. Right. And so you people who are doing startups, you kind of need, this is kind of the heart of it. I wouldn't delegate this task to anybody. Yeah. You got to do this yourself because it's kind of like how you're going to incentivize your employee, how, how, uh, you, how you're going to really structure your company. Um, you know, are you going to keep all of it? Um, and I think I've already told you guys a little bit about my philosophy on, on that. Try to, if you're starting out small, um, you know, you, you want to try to keep the company very, very tight. Um, minority shareholders are a big, big, big pain. Um, and you know, oftentimes they, they really have to hit your values. And so, um, and you, and they can actually harm your company. They can destroy it. So, um, it's, it's important. There's different ways you can send incentivize your, you know, employees, but you got to be careful about how you do that. Um, giving out shares like bailout candy, you know, (laughs) like this usually is not the way to go. That's not the way I do it. Um, because you know, the value is not really liquid anyway. A lot of people are looking at it and they're saying, uh, yeah, well, you know, if, if there was a liquidity event in the next two or three or four or five years, then, then they become very valuable, meaning a liquidity event, like either they're going to go public or they're, or they're whatever, you know, but you know, there's, there's some things there that you need to really think about. And, you know, when you're taking on, you know, partners, it's, it's, uh, it can be, it can be a disaster. A little messy. It can be a disaster. Okay. Um, even founders, 
like uh, you, if you have a founder a company and uh, if you're doing a company and you have founders and then what if the two founders start to fight yeah yeah i've seen companies that way like um i you know they're two companies you know and then they and then it's duked out you know it's duked out with legal and it's yeah. duked out with the stuff and so you really want to sometimes the company is way more stable in the formative years when you're just starting out and you're building it up it's good to have like one guy you know pretty much control the whole show because you don't because uh, and you got to make sure you pick the right guy right. but if it's done by committee it's very very difficult to and you might find out that one of the partners just doesn't have the values of the company right then what do you do you know what i mean it's it's kind of a thing so usually it's always one idea guy and he he puts his blood sweat and tears and pound of flesh into it and you know and then the other guys are along for the ride and that's typically what happens gotcha. all right so then you know that that can go on for four or five even ten years you know yeah. until something maybe takes off and then usually what happens at that time is the ownership kind of increases and that ha- increases typically at a liquidity inv- event or right. leading up to an equity liquidity event. So, right. um, yeah, so here's the founder. Uh, so the fun, here's two founders. Um, and in this case, they're, they're 2 million shares each. Okay. Um, there's, there's no employees because they're just starting out. Okay. So there's no really pre-money options. And so this is the case of two founders that are equal partners, 50, mm-hmm. 50, um, and they have no employees and they have an idea, but the idea is so great. They got it patented. Okay. And they yeah. sold they maybe they sold, you know, $5 million worth of stuff on the internet. Okay. And yeah. so now they're raising, raising some money. Okay. So this is what the current capitalization is. 4 million shares total with two founders of common stock. You see that? Yeah. So that's what that is. Now, if you had some, if you had some employees, I suppose they did that also with some employees, um, you could put the employees' names in here, and those would be typically options. And the options are kind of, uh, they're configured like, okay, we'll give you 3,000 shares, and those shares, you'll get, you'll get, you'll have a vesting schedule with them. Why, why is that? Well, because we want to stick you, keep you sticking around. We don't want you to go away, right? And, um, and, and that way, you're like, okay, so you'll get those 3,000 shares, but you'll get them in, in basically... Uh, equal tranches over those five years. Okay. Okay. And some people, so that's what sometimes that's why they're called options. Um, And there's all kinds of different ways they can do that. But here's the, here's the different options that you got. So we're going to put in, we're going to put in a thousand options there. We're going to put in uh, 4,000 options here. He's been around a little bit longer. So something along those lines. Okay. And you can see how there's some value in there, right? Yeah. See how the value is there. Mm, okay, so there's there's the total uh, amount of stock plus pre money options. Um, the post money options is really uh, calculated in the other spreadsheet, so we don't have to really go through those. But let's kind of you can see that the main value of the shares and the exit value those are all you know typically within the founders um, you know and things like that. Okay, so let's go over to the. Um, to the table now everything in blue you can change okay mm-hmm. and i'll kind of explain what this is suppose i'm going to sell my business and now we have two founders and we have a couple employees with some pre-money options right and we're going to uh do a, a raise and we're going to do a 20 million dollar raise okay and um so uh what what you would do is you wouldn't put 20 million dollars in there because if you did a 20 million dollar raise that, that wouldn't be good okay so um what you would do here you put the pre money, so we're gonna we're gonna raise fifty million. Okay, and then what we're gonna have the this investor put in ten million, and this investor put in ten million. Okay. If I had raised at at ten million dollar pre money, obviously that wouldn't work, right? Because so here's the here is the post money valuation. This is the pre money valuation. Yep. Okay. So that's the that's what I'm going to the investors and saying, hey, my company is worth fifty million. Yeah. Okay. And so you can see that that's sh- that is setting the share price. Ah. Oh, you see that? Uh, yeah. And it yeah. sets it sets the um, it sets there's the investment. It also set sets how many shares they're going to get. 
And it also establishes their ownership. All right. They're pretty simple. Yeah. I, I mean, the calculations are just pluses and minuses. There's no calculus going on here at all. So you have to have the numbers to know what to enter in there. Right, exactly. So, yeah, you just need to know where it is. You, you only do the blues, okay? So um, maybe after the, the money as is, is made, I'm going to reserve another 5% to shares for the employees, okay? In that case, they here's, here's some employees, and they, after you do the raise, you get 5%, okay? Um, or, or 10%. Now watch what happens to the effective pre-money. It will go down. Oh. Right? So here I'm going to save 30% of the shares so that it went down to 28. You can yeah. see that. So basically what those, those shares there are diluting these guys here who actually paid uh, in, right, yep. these guys are not yep. paying for it. They're just there. Yeah. Right. They're yep. making the, yep. okay. They're making the work. Mm-hmm. Some of them work. Some of them don't. Okay. <laughs> um, so the investor obviously wants to know uh, how many, uh, how much are you going to, you know, try to incentivize. It's important to incentivize, but at the same time, it's, dilu- it's diluting. Right. right? You got to realize that. Yeah. Right? Okay. And you can also see it's also kind of affecting share price as well. The more the more you, the more shares you're giving away for free, yeah. The the less the, the value the le- less have. the value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here also is a is what's called convertible notes. That's also taken into account here. And let's suppose you got two guys who want to do twenty five thousand in a convertible note. What that means is that I'm going to give you uh, twenty five thousand dollars, and I'll buy twenty five thousand dollars worth of shares or whatever it is. Um, and there'll be 2,269 shares, but, but I'm going to hold that as a note. So I'm not actually going to exercise it into equity. Okay. So I can convert my debt into equity. Um, so, a, a that's what a convertible note does. In other words, it says, I'm going to give you $25,000 shares and you're going to agree to pay me back in equal installments, just like a car loan or a regular loan. Okay. But at some point in the future, if, if, you go public, okay, yeah. or something like that. I want to have the right to um, discount my shares so I can buy more of them, right, and, and get a discount so I can buy more of the shares. So okay. what, look what happens here. Um, so more than, more than that $25,000 investment. Well, why would anybody want to do that? Well, because um, maybe maybe says, okay, look, uh, Maybe get a million dollars or $2 million in an investment as a convertible note. Maybe you can pay that off. You know, yeah. maybe you don't need to convert them, right? Mm-hmm. So you get, you know, t- basically they give you a year or something like that or two years to get to the point where you're going to make that happen. What if it doesn't happen? Do they convert automatically into equity or do they convert at a discount or all this, all this stuff? Is it my making sense? Yeah. Okay. No, no I get it. So, so we can, let's, well, let's play with this discount to see what it does to the shares. Okay, let's see here. So I want to put in. Wow, these guys are getting a really great deal. You can see the number of shares that they're getting is more is, is larger, Quite right? Quite a bit, yeah. Um, what happened to these shares right here? They went down, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Let's let's do that again. Let's do that 5%. Let's look at the shares as they go down here. Yeah, uh, very little, but yeah, yeah they they still did they still did Obviously, this is a great deal for these guys cuz they get a 50% discount, so they're getting more right. and more and more shares. You know, um, later at a later event, at right. some later event, right? Yeah. But they're giving they're giving you a loan, and, and the reason why um, founders like this is because it's not equity right away. So the, you know, we have the ability to actually pay you back, right? Yeah. Right. And there's terms associated with that, so it'd be much better. In fact, if you had, if you thought you had the ability to do this, and uh, let's say, say t- so you got a ten million dollar loan. What if you did this? You're raising $20 million right there. You can see that you oh, raised wow. $20 million, but 10 of it is on a note that yep. you, you may or may not, um, you know, exercise, but you can see he's getting way more shares in the event that it is, uh, that, that in the future, that's going to convert over to equity. You can see that that's yeah. because of this debt discount here. So I'm going to change that to 30. I'm going to change that to 10. Or you can see if you put it at zero, they're about the same. Ah, uh, yeah. See that? Yeah. So no debt discount or whatever. So usually the debt's like, okay, it's like the, it's like the, they're getting their cake and they're eating it too. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you a loan for $10 million. Okay, you're going to sign a personal guarantee for that. I get all your, all your assets. I, I get first to lien holder value on that. And then, and then when you actually something happens and we'd go to the conversion, 
you're also going to give me this dead discount of 5%, which gives me more than the guy who actually put in the equity in the first place. Right. So uh, that's the reason why people like uh, to do those, uh, what's called convertible notes. Okay. So um, it's kind of like, okay. The other thing is that the other reason why an investor would do this is they, they, they don't really know. They don't really know what your business plan is going to be. Okay. They don't know if it's going to, you know, they don't know if it's going to really pan out, mm-hmm. but yeah. they, they, they kind of believe it. So they're going to put that in there and you're on the hook for the note. And yeah. you have, I see your house over there. I see, <laughs> I see, uh, oh, you got, you got a million acres. Uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, if it doesn't Take work out, assets. guess what? It's mine. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I will only give you $10 million if you have $10 million in assets. You know, that's usually how that works, right? Yeah, so, I mean, again, yeah, you, the investor doesn't want to get stuck with this right. This guy's bad business plan or bad right. management. Right, so that, that happens. So recoup. you can see here total seed debt here of $10 million, uh, total shares of 1.1, 1. 1, and then ownership of 17%. That, that leaves the common stock and pre-money options. That's at uh, 60%. You can see, wow, look at those guys. Are, that, that, that is... If you recall, this is the these are the owners, mm-hmm. and then these are also uh, these are the owners plus the uh, pre money option people, your your employees. Yep. Remember, remember back here. That's where it comes from, right here, four or five. See that? Nice. Yeah. So there's the total number of shares is sixty percent. So these guys are controlling the company, right? Um, and then here is the total uh, total total amount of money you're raising there's the total number of shares and it's 100 percent ownership so you can see this is a key 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 document right Very. So you could, it's kind of like if you know how to read this it's got everything you need to really understand here's your yeah. share price here's the pre-money here's the effective pre-money because of all the post pool people that are in there i don't really want that you know you might argue hey look i'm i don't agree with that pre-money i think it's right. actually 36 Okay, because you're, you're giving away so many shares. Right. So that would yeah. be a negotiating item, right? And then down here, there's a nice summary here. So here's all the, the pre-money. Here's what happened before. There were some options that were given, right? And then after you did the raise, here's what it looks like. The founders gave away, you know, about 40%, uh, gave away, you know, 40%. Uh, and uh, the preferred shares got 34% of the company and the options have 5%. That's because you can see this, there's options here, and then there's options up at that post money pool. See that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then here's the value based on what you raised, right? $9 and one, $9 and 10 cents. Here's the value. You can see it's quite a, quite a nice value. Wow. You can see there's the share value would be $60 million. That's because you raised at $50 million, and then you, and then you have post money here. You raised 10 so the, the, the value is the sum of this 10 and this 10. You don't include debt in that post money value. Okay. Okay. Yep. So the debt goes on your balance sheet. Okay. Um, and then here's the exit value. Okay. And this is where you can say, okay, now here's, here's what my company is worth in four or five years. So I'm going to say, we're going to, we're going to take that $50 million value and we're going to bring it up to a hundred million dollars. Now um, here, or if we just did a, you know, kind of a raise. And then we, then we went on to the stock exchange and we now have a hundred million dollar valuation. This is what all those shares would be worth in, you know, wow. 60 million versus the share value of 36. So this would be considered the, you know, the exit value of okay. those shares. Okay. So and there's lots of different ways to calculate exit values, but I think uh, we don't really need to go to, into them in, in depth right now. We've already been at this for yeah. almost an hour. I hope we're talking sleeper, about starting up. We're not getting out quite yet. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> Those are some things I think um, in the course, we'll probably break it up, uh, break up the cap table discussion with the, um, with the PPM discussion, please, please money. And uh, hopefully, hopefully this all works out for you guys. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this. It's the nuts and bolts of legal plus, uh, plus how you really understand um, how your company is capitalized. And and this, uh, this cap table is, is really the way to do that. Very important information. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's it is it. So, we went over the pitch. We went over the presentation. We went over the the strategic uh, VTO. We went over, heck, we went over the PPM. Yeah. I mean, these are really the nuts and bolts of what startup is all about. Yeah. 
you know, it's the business side. Like, okay, everybody has an idea. And then you're like, oh, I have this great idea. I'm going to go out. And then the, the investor says, okay, where's your business plan? <laughs> right. And people are like, what is, a, what is the business plan? What is it? <laughs> right. So yeah. we, we gave you detailed information. Yeah. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen um, anybody really go through it step by step like that. I've never seen that yeah. anywhere, anywhere out there. I'm sure, it, I'm sure that's out there somewhere, but um, you know, I don't not think anybody. No, not is. easy to find. You'd have to piece it together. There's just so much information. Yeah. yeah. That, that so like hopefully everything. this helped you guys, and uh, this would be applicable to any any business, really. Yeah. Um, you know. So, all right. Uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, appreciate you guys being here. And uh, take care. Yep. Take See you care, later, buddy. Bye. Bam. Bam.